in this episode of the tripod that's the first time i made a dirty joke i know podcast. welcome we? finally 54 <laughs> episodes <laughs> later like how do i continue <laughs> on from that like you know um well i've got a big tip to give you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and now it's going to go, welcome to the tripod. <laughs> welcome to the tripod. Hello, everybody. And welcome to episode 54 of the tripod photography podcast based in Ireland. My name is Kevin Hennessy, Kevin Hennessy photography. And somewhere on this screen here, I don't know what order they're going to be in on the screen. I have my two friends. Who are the loveliest lads in the land? Thank that you. was really weird the way you said that. It's so like a sweet. eulogy or something, wasn't it? What is going on? <laughs> that was that was the plan. Um, Kev, I'm, I'm above you to the left, so this way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Sean is the other way, and you're down here. I'm down right, here. Man. Sean yeah. is here for me. Ronan's here. Not in my screen. My screen. Ronan's to the left, and Kevin is down below. So clowns to the left of me. Jokers to the right. Yeah, and here we are stuck with you every bloody week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was your week, Lados? I just want to introduce yourselves, by the way, because I don't know if people actually know, let's say, like, for example, and I'm the youngest age. host of the podcast. Exactly. And what's your name? Sean O'Riordan. Hi, Sean O'Riordan. Hello. My hey, name is Ronan HD, and I am the most average podcast host in Ireland. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance here on episode 54 of the Tripod. Yep. Uh, and as always, thanks for listening. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you may have guessed, people were a bit giddy for some reason today. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm, 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 delirious with, I'm delirious with tiredness. That's why I'm really <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, look, we'll start with you. How is your week? <laughs> <Road>. <laughs> It's not at all to do with um, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, how was your week, Shani? What did you do? What did you get up to? Any shooting? Um, no, I didn't touch the camera in. Ooh, I haven't touched the camera in ages, actually. Um, so yeah, no, busy, very just busy in work and um, just very busy week. I've been up and down to Limerick, so yeah. Uh, You're like polar opposites, like because last week on the episode you were. So flat out taking photographs that I know, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know this I mean? is the thing about me. Like, I, like yeah. I, 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 I can go weeks then without touching the camera. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Just it's when the opportunity arises. I think it's good. It's good to step away from the camera as well. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've, I've, a, I've a rake of stuff to edit. It. I'm just not in the mood for editing. Like you have to yes. be in the mood to edit photos. Hundred you know percent. I mean, yeah. and I'm just like, I clicked into Lightroom this evening and. I went to blend files and I just, I just like a, See you later. Out from yeah, yeah, so until I'm in the mood, but it's great to have a, a, a images, a backlog to edit, you know, when those winter evenings come back, like, you know. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I'm all, I'm all good. Thank you for asking, Kev. You're very welcome. And Pessimist. And winter rowdy. evenings. I got a haircut. So I got a sick it, fade. It, it looks great. Sick fade. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And Roro, how was your week, my friend? It was fine, thank you. Did you do anything? I did. What you do? Stuff. Tell us, will you? Okay. I shot a wedding. Another one. Yes. That's four this year. Four? Four. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Anya and Stephen, lovely couple. Hello, um, Anya and Stephen. Congratulations. now, like, their parents were there and their parents are vaccinated, so you're not really worried. Do you know? They're it, coughing yeah. on them and stuff. Yeah. Now, you still follow all the, the rules and all that crack, like, but... It's nice to have that little bit of respite and that peace of mind knowing that some people are vaccinated now. Yeah, it kind of yeah. it takes the pressure off a bit, and you can enjoy the day more. And like they enjoy the day more, and it's just Class. lovely crack. Um, and a few more guests allowed now as well, which is good. Oh, really? The what's the what's the crack now with guests? Uh, fifteen now. I think I should know this, but I don't. I think it's ah, fifteen. Happy days. Um, and if they're vaccinated, then they're allowed meet up afterwards with two vaccinated households. I think. Or something ah, like lovely. And um, there's nowhere really open to, to actually meet up and do things yeah, yeah, yeah. yet, but it's yeah. coming. Like the, the end is nigh. Or near? Yeah. Near? No, not no. Nigh. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> nay. We could Correct. say nay if we want to be horses about it. And... Nay. Um, nay. What else did I do? I was in the Wicklow Mountains and I got attacked yeah, by midges. 
and they were the size of cattle and I've got lumps in my head now. They were honestly the biggest midges I've ever seen in my life. And I, I hit Skin a few. So soft. I got a few of them, a few digs. Nice. And um, then more just came as backup. I was like, Jesus. Wow. Man. Call their mates like. Wow. Yeah. But like Sean now, I have a bit of a backlog of photos from the last couple of weeks to get through and I just don't have the time because I'm busy doing actual work. Good. Which is good. Brilliant. Like, that's that's lovely. So, that is good. Yeah. Skin so soft for the midges. Um, I have to credit Mark O'Brien for that. I don't know how he found out. Possibly he just bought it just because. What is skin so soft? It's a spray. It's a woman. It's a women's spray made by Avon. You cannot get it in Ireland. It has to be bought from the UK or on eBay. Okay. The army uses it while they're hiking in the Scottish mountains for mid repellent. It's that good. And trust me, I bought three bottles of it last year and I ordered another three bottles of it uh, this summer. It's excellent. This episode does, is sponsored by Skin So Skin Soft so by soft. Avon. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. So anyone midges, I put it in the, I even put it in the itinerary for the for my workshops that if you have Skin So Soft at home or else even buy a bottle. Now I'll have bottles of it in the car, like, but it's unbelievable for mid repellent. Whatever it is, they just don't like it. And you smell unreal as well. <laughs> Class. It's win-win. <laughs> win-win. There Happy days. Oh yeah, you have workshops now, Sean. You Last time we yeah. spoke, you were toying with the idea and now it's a thing. Yeah, it's a, I just went for it and um, <laughs> I, I was toying with the idea for about half an hour and then they were up on his website. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I was I was pondering it for a lot longer than that. I just didn't tell anyone. Um, um, I told Connor Finnegan, I told Colin, um, oh, yeah. Colin Gleason, and I mentioned it to you as well. You did. You've said but, it several um, times, in fairness. Two of them sold out, um, and I have another, I have one spot remaining for June 12th as of the recording of this podcast and I also launched another one for August as well just in case someone has to plan ahead amazing and I also launched a bespoke one-to-one workshop whereby there's no set date so someone books it and then we just kind of decide on a date that suits them because it's kind of hard I was kind of like well what dates do I put down because some people cannot make certain dates so I just said I'll just leave it open to the individual so um, I will see how that goes, you know, but um, look, it's fantastic. I mean, even if even if I don't get any more clients for the rest of the summer, it's it's very humbling that people have decided to come on a workshop with me. And um, I really hope that I can give them the best experience possible, you know. It's really nice. That really, is really amazing. Nice. Oh, hang on. Whoa. Whoa. No, Jesus, Kevin. Fuck. I was keeping an eye on. <laughs> this is staying in, isn't it? Sorry about that, folks. We don't know what happened there. We had some technical difficulties. It was um, Kevin. It was me. Always. Yeah. Always me. Mm-hmm. Lads, you know, like I know I'm a mess here, right? But also, you know what I was thinking the other day? When I, when I get an idea in my head, I, I can be quite determined. So like... Yeah. Good or bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? I was, sit, I was, I was working from home. And... I decided it's like I want to take some famous people portraits because I just want to. So I reached out to because we've got the country again now, so I can travel places. Uh reached out to a few and I've confirmed one already with a a very, very talented and handsome man. Can't, don't know if I can say his name, but trust me, trust me. You'll you'll know who he is and his band, and I've got two shoots with one with him, one with his band. The which is exciting. Bandits. I wish, man. Honestly, <laughs> to, to photograph Blind Boy would be yeah. one of the greatest honors of my time. That uh, would be class. What a man! I'm going to ask him. I, I'm going to ask him now. I'm going to ask him as well. I'm going to ask him as well. And tell him I'm from Limerick, so I'll have a better chance than you. Dirt. Okay, Sean, um, what were you saying anyway there? Because uh, Kevin's gone off on his phone there. Yeah. And this, there, there's been enough Kevin-related disasters. In this Shut episode. up, your face. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got, I've got two lined up. One with a, um, a Dublin-based female singer and one with a, a Mullingar man. We'll put it that way. Oh, uh, Brizzy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's Brizzy. <laughs> and, and, and the blizzards. So um, I'm very yes. much looking forward to it. Yeah, it's real. Should be That's so cool, man. Um, but that was just because I said I like I decided to myself I want to do this, and then within like an hour and a half, I had two of them sorted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I respect it. Did yeah. you contact him on Twitter? 
Uh, no, uh, Facebook. Oh, interesting. Yes, Ronan. Ronan. Just wanted to, to ask a question. You know, when you put your mind to things and you're quite determined. Yes. I can see where this is going. Who, who, <laughs> who won the um, the tripod hoodie giveaway for two thousand dollars? So I tried that right three times, three different websites, and it it's not easy to do. So just give me time. Okay, I'll do it. That's grand. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, well, can we not announce this? Oh, we can't because we haven't done the live draw yet. Yes. Okay. Doesn't right. matter. Anyway, lads, today on the tripod, we're going to actually talk about landscape photography, believe it or not. What? I right, know 50, yeah, this 50 is funny, yeah. odd episodes in and we've never really had a landscape photography episode. No, we haven't. Which is strange. mad. Yeah, you strange, know, we, yeah. so, Considering, you know, like... 80% of our listeners would be landscape photographers. Would that be close to that? I'd that say? would be fair. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I definitely yeah. say it um, should. Which is, which is um, impressive considering we've held that age since and not having spoken yeah, that much about landscape actually, photography. Actually, yeah. So li- listeners, thank you all for sticking around. Yeah. Uh, so this one is all for you. Um, we have an expert or two or three, no, or two, uh, in landscape <laughs> photography on the on the episode here. So we have Sean O'Rourden and Ronan HD. Mm-hmm. Pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining me on the monopod. You're welcome. You're very it's great welcome. to be here. <gasps> Are we guests? Am yeah. I getting paid for, am I getting paid for this? Yeah, no, yeah. Your, check, Sean, your no. check's on the way. Okay, what? thanks. Oh, Are you f- don't get one, Ronan. Yeah, it is. No, because you, you don't leave Wicklow, so. Yeah, because as oh. we discussed last week, Wicklow has everything. Mm-hmm. So landscape photography. Uh, Sean, what is landscape photography? Oh, wow. That's some question. There you go. I'd have to buy another box of beer now to answer that question. Um, <laughs> to be, be here a while. It's expensive. Yeah. Landscape <laughs> photography. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> landscape photography is, oh, wow. It's, it's, it's probably one of the most subjective genres of photography um, in terms of the amount of things that can go wrong and the amount of things that are out of your hands as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, because I think with other forms of photography, a lot of things are within your control in terms of lighting, uh, in terms of the setup, etc. Whereas landscape photography, um, you're very, I'm actually, it's funny you ask this question because I'm actually doing up a PDF at the moment that I'm, uh, that I'm going to give to my workshop clients about like weather and different things like that. Like, and the one thing I say is like, the weather more or less dictates your whole landscape photography shoot. Yep. It dictates the look of the image, it dictates the conditions you're shooting, and it dictates your composition even, which I'll touch on in a bit. Um, so landscape photography, for that very reason, is one of the most exciting genres of photography. Yeah, you're, you're, at the mer- you're at the mercy of Mother Nature at all times. Absolutely. I love that. Class. I love knowing that no matter what images I get or no matter what I do or the, what levels I get to, Mother Nature can just say fuck you and <laughs> that's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, she can just put you back down. Actually, yeah, sorry, Sean. Not today, no. sir. No yeah. way. Yeah. And that's what keeps do you remember last week I spoke with the dry you like that's what keeps you coming back? Like, do you know what I mean? If every day you went out and got bangers, it would get boring. Like so that yeah, landscape photography is is incredibly exciting and something I'm incredibly passionate about. And like within landscape photography, obviously there's so many subcategories almost as well. Yeah. You know, which yeah, is, is which is beautiful because like you know mm. if you take concert photography it's, it's either you shoot gigs or you don't shoot gigs you know what i mean like, it's it's like that's that's what it is um weddings are you, you know weddings you, you, deadly. You, you, weddings are deadly weddings are beautiful aren't they like they, they, they are filled with love and yeah wonder yeah um but like landscape <laughs> photography like you could say you're a landscape photographer but you know are you a, a seascape photographer are you an astro photographer are you like all of these things combined woodland like there's so mm. many different petals on the on the flower of landscape photography wow yeah <laughs> you're you're absolutely correct that was a lovely analogy you, yeah manage. you are correct um within landscape photography there's a bit of everything and you can either decide to specialize in one of those genres or you can try and do a bit of everything which is which is what i do i think um but I starting out it's good to do a bit of everything do you know what I mean but it's 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 a genre of photography lads where there is so many variables in terms of it can be it can be hard to start out like 
what time of day do I go out shooting? What setting should I use? What kit should I use? Where should I go? Like, what camera mode should I be in? Do you know what I mean? All these things come into it. So I think for this episode, I'd like to try and break that down a bit. And, and that would be some valuable information, even for the advanced landscape photographer here. Like, do you know what I'm I mean? I'm here for it. I'm excited. I think yeah, you'll we can find, t- if Kevin was to check his phone, there would be specific questions to address all of those things that Sean just mentioned that would make a really well presented and flowing podcast Ah, for our listeners. Oh, look at this. So considering we are guests on the podcast. This is amazing. (laughs) This is cool. I get to interview the two lads. Unbelievable. (laughs) We're going to get one at a time. All right, then. This is this is awesome. Who wants wants to go first? I'm so excited about this. Can I just, yeah, can I just say, right, um, I was in the limelight there for a second. Ronan is equally as good a landscape photographer as I am. It's just he does not get out of Wicklow. <laughs> What's he, does, Wicklow? <laughs> he doesn't get the same opportunities <laughs> to shoot as I do. But that man is equally as we I showed a landscape photograph before we started recording and I was like, I can't I've been trying to process this image for seven days. Seven days I've been mulling over this image and nothing it just wasn't time to get her for me because of the sky. He gave me one tip and it was just, that was it. It Bang. just came together. Done so. He has the eye. So Ronan is equally as good as I am. Just, we're on a level playing field here going forward in this podcast. Now, <coughs> I'm diabolical at accepting compliments. And when you two say nice things about me, I always turn into this. It's like a defense mechanism where I'm like, now. You shrivel up like a prune. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it actually, I, like, it's nice to hear nice things about yourself. But I'm so bad at accepting it. I'm like, oh. I think that's an Irish thing, take, do you know that? Yeah, it is an Irish Isn't it thing. Like that's you, need, you need to take the compliment because what you say will, or what I say will have the exact same weight as what you say in this episode. You two are a little adorable lost, beauts. I lost you know that? all the weight, Sean. Well, right. Uh, Rowan and Harding Downs. <laughs> yes. Um, so what is the best kit to start? No, this is, that's a great question, Kev. Where did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's plucked it out of my head. This is a controversial one um, oh. because you're often tipped to get a wide angle lens to start. Mm-hmm. And I would go the opposite and I would say go for a good mid range zoom. And in most cases, you get one of them with your camera, which is the kit lens. And I would actually back anyone learning photography to stick with your kit lens for a year or two and you won't go wrong. Um, obviously, another central piece of kit is a tripod. So mm-hmm. if you pair up an entry level DSLR or mirrorless and the kit lens that comes with it with um, like a halfway decent tripod, don't go cheap on the tripod, get something good like um, Vanguard have good affordable tripods that are lightweight for hiking and um, get something like that. Like there'd be between 100 to 150 euro, you'll pick up a good tripod. The ones you see on Amazon that are 40 euro and it's like Japan's best tripod of 2043. Uh, no. <laughs> don't touch them there they're honestly yeah. woeful they're not really adjustable they kind of go up or down and that's it and they shake and they fall apart after about a month but um i remember going out to shoot with you kev actually and you whipped your tripod out and the legs just fell off and yep. it was one of them yeah <laughs> just out of nowhere then you've no tripod left so you, you yeah. actually then adapted that into a phone holder i did actually yeah it was, yeah it was macgyver stuff yeah. it was very good MacGyver job job yeah. Yep. Kevin's never yeah, whipped so. anything out with when I don't shoot with him. Not yet. Anyway, Shawnee. <laughs> Thanks. <you. laughs> Wait till next time. Oh yeah, that's it. Christ. Um, mm. Yeah, no, but for me, starting out, don't get like when you go onto YouTube and stuff, you can get lost in neutral density filters and polarizers and all this. Uh, Z50 is what I'd recommend. So your future proofed kit lens that comes with it and a, a nice little tripod and away you go. You're laughing. Yeah. Can I just say, as of the time of recording this, and hopefully the promotion will still be running, but in Germany, there's a massive Nikon Z promotion on. You can get a Z50 with the 16 to 50 lens and the 50 to 250 lens for 999. That is. That's unbeatable value. That is Squeeze insane. It. This isn't sponsored by Nikon, even though we are shooting Nikon. Um, Should Nikon, be. If, Nikon, if you're listening, we would love to but, be sponsored. Well, I, by you, I use Nikon. Whatever. You, you anyway, shoot Nikon, Sean. Yeah, I shoot Nikon, yeah. And Kev shoots... I'm so cheeky. I don't Nick, know what I shoot. Nikon. Nikon. Um, but that is incredible value. Uh, like a really good 
um, mirrorless camera with lenses that covers you from so the 16 to 50 that's like that's like your 24 to like 70 70 focal length and then you're 75 ish yeah. yeah it's a bit more than 70 and then you're 50 to 250 basically like you're 70 to 300 kind of a bit more yeah. than that incredible so like that's unbeatable so if, you, if you're on the cusp of kind of I can go gear photography and you're starting out I'd but I have to buy that kit 100% do you know what I mean so um, yeah definitely definitely don't cheap out on the tripod either I'm only spending about 200 euros on a good tripod I'd say with a ball head do you know you'll have it for life like tripods yeah, they yeah. once take care of them they're fairly bulletproof like it's kind of like know. us like if you take care of us oh uh, yeah so keep listening to the podcast or else we'll, our legs will fall apart like Kevin it's true said. it's true and they'll be knocking in with doubt. We no. are open to replacement legs, though. You're Ooh. you're just like evil, you know that. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> what did, that wasn't even aimed at you. It could have been aimed at me. I'm oh, the one okay. who took a break recently, so. Ah, okay. Next question, Kev. <laughs> next question is for Sean O'Reardon. Uh, this one came in from Ron and Harding Downs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be, best time of the day to shoot. Oh, now, this isn't your favorite. This is like. Yeah, I know, but there's no like that's not a one answer question because there's generally there's two best times of it sunrise or sunset, like the golden yes. hour, like do you know what I mean? Um, because the light is softer and it's just easier to edit and it's easier to shoot in, and it's less contrasting. Now, on the flip side of that, right, for a beginner, it's often much easier to expose properly for an image during the daytime, yeah, when there mm-hmm. isn't. A lot of high dynamic range whereas at sunrise or sunset especially if you're shooting directly towards the sun because the level of light is lower the shadows are darker obviously do you know what i mean so it's harder to expose against the bright sky so for beginners it's actually worthwhile even just going out shooting during the daytime to practice focus do you, know, you it's it, you often hear that landscape photography you, know, you can't shoot during the daytime that's nonsense like you can yeah. like you can go out and practice your composition you can practice your focusing you can practice your editing you can get files that you can practice processing in lightroom do you know and then get yourself ready for sunrise or sunset um so yeah but like if you're kind of a bit more experienced then obviously the golden hour and sunrise or sunset because you'll get more pleasing colors in the sky and softer light and everything and on, on, on the foreground very lovely. When I started, I generally was at any time of the day, you know, it wasn't sunrise, sunset. It was just, and I think that that will be the same for a lot of beginners, you know, because yeah. like you kind of only really start knowing about sunrise, sunset, golden hour. Like, you know, obviously you can see these things, but you don't know that the golden hour is the specific time that mm. photographs will look gorgeous in. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. um, but, but having said that, sometimes, especially in the winter months, the daytime can be really enjoyable to shoot because yes. you're not rushing. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. not. It's very hard stumbling around in the dark at sunrise to find a composition that could possibly not work out well when the light comes mm-hmm. up and then you're you're not you're left with nothing. Whereas during the middle of the day, you've got fleeting light, you've got sunshine, you've got showers, you've got rainbows. It's, it's it, I really like shooting in the middle of the day. Yeah. Remember the, the Wicklow day we had, Ronan? Like we yeah, shot the winter. whole day and it was all yes. lovely. I'd expand on that slightly for the time of day. Like Sean raises a good point there. Sunrise or sunset. When we're in summer now, like sunrise is at 4 a.m. Sometimes you have a 3 a.m. start to catch a sunrise. So your only option could be to shoot in the middle of the day. Uh, Likewise in winter, the sun drops much lower in the sky. So you can kind of, the the sunrise is at 8 a.m. So it's handy to get up for. And then you can shoot pretty much all day because you're nearly in like perpetual side light almost. Yeah, gorgeous. For the summer months, shooting during the day, try get into the woodland because you'll get dappled light. If there's a a few clouds, you'll get like a lovely soft light. And the woodland is a great place to practice images any time of day, but also to come to terms with your focal length and compression and like wide angle versus telephoto, all those kind of things. And it'll also hone in your eye for composition because the woodland can be very busy and like you just never know what you're going to get. So you have to expand on the skills you have to shoot. In yeah, and like correct. With the sun in summer, it's pretty much directly above your head. 
um, for most of the day. So that light comes straight down and it reduces all, well, most of the shadows and stuff that you'd get. So yep. again, it's easier to expose a photograph and harder to go wrong. So you can come to terms with what's actually happening in your scene. Mm, so time correct. of day, any time of today. Of course. <laughs> and do you know what the woodland is also very good for is learning about depth of field because yep. you've got lots of subjects to in front of your lens. Whereas depth of field landscape topic, sometimes you have like everything is far away. Do you know what I mean? Whereas in the woodland, if you're at like f5.6 and you've got a tree that's like 10 feet away from you, well, that's the tree that's going to be in focus. So also like depth of field yeah. comes really comes into play in woodland. Amazing. Yeah. That's that's perfect. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mr. Ronan, back to you. Oh, God. Oh, um, what would be your best tips for composition? Best tips for composition? Um, see, I'm going to go again with the basics. And it's, it's all about your basics. Like your, take your camera with its kit lens and your new little tripod, learn your exposure triangle and get to, to grips with the rule of thirds, which we have a video on our YouTube channel about. Um, it's like the most basic and it's called a rule, but rules are made to be broken. Oh, um, you rebel. You basically have your photo split up into different sections. So there's like an intersection that would be on the top right say where these lines dividing your photo go in the human brain naturally looks to the right because we read from left to right so if you're composing an image the best thing you can do is try and put your subject on the top right intersection and use your legs to actually move around the scene keeping that locked in on your top right um, intersection and then walk around the scene with your camera. Don't just plonk it on your tripod and get everything else to fall in nicely. So it's all leading in to your subject on that upper right third. When you find that, set up the tripod, whack the camera on, snap the photo and away you go. That's a good way. Well, now, obviously you can put it on different thirds and it depends on the scene. But if you're just starting out, try and focus in on that and, and you'll quickly get your composition dialed in. This is a genuine question. Do you think... Uh countries that have arabic speaking people but they prefer to see photos on the left then because they yeah, potentially yeah that's mad wow yeah that's like a hot take but that, Ron, that is like were, a hot take oh my yeah, god it is like Ron, as you were saying that that makes so much sense my eye always goes straight to the right hand side of the photograph yeah. mm. straight away when i see an image it's always like to the right hand side that's so strange wow that's the optimum optimum way now obviously That's, photos on the left work as well uh, it depends yeah. on the leading lines and stuff but the easiest way to get your head around all the elements in composition like foreground interest leading lines uh, interest versus subject and how to lead the eye putting it on that upper right third will give you a bonus straight away because everyone is trying to go left to right anyway so it, even a bad <clears throat> excuse me even a bad composition that has the subject on the top right you'll get away with because the eye naturally moves that way so someone will find it appealing you know yeah very wow. interesting that is interesting jesus yeah that's that, that makes so much sense like um composition is a funny word isn't it it do you is ever of, like, do you ever think about <laughs> composition like do you know like the we we, we touched on this last week was a, a composition is almost a location like but a composition is like the way I explain it is like the ingredients of a cake. Like it's it's the makeup of the image. Like so, like the composition can be the light, it could be the subject, it could be I don't know, it could be anything in the image. Technically, like is is the biggest part of the composition. Yep. You know, um, the secret sauce is getting the different elements to tie together. Yes, sir. And that creates an overarching composition. Yep. Um, and but often then you don't have different elements in the image, so you have a very simple composition. Um, one very one very kind of powerful thing I learned is about the different scenes that I want to shoot and the different skies or the whatever diff, different conditions. And you have to choose your, con your composition based on those conditions, I think. Yes. So if I have a composition where I have some nice interest in my foreground, 
that I'm not terribly worried about the sky because I know that all the composition is going to be in my foreground and in maybe the middle ground. Do you know what I mean? It's like the camera is more likely going to be tilted down. Yeah. So that that gives way to being able to shoot on clear evenings when there's no no interest in the sky. Do you know what I mean? You'll get away with it then. Whereas there's other scenes where, like let's say, like that cottage shot, like it's just there, everything is about the sky in that shot yes. because the foreground is these rushes that are ugly looking. So I, I want to cut them out of my foreground and I want literally the cottage and the sky. Yeah. So I know straight away if I have recce that scene before and I'm like, okay, I need to shoot this scene when there's a nice dramatic sky or a nice sunset over that. Do you know what I mean? So now you're getting into the realm of planning and pre-visualizing yes. the shot before it's actually there. So this is where composition is a funny word because like composition leads onto so many little things in landscape photography that is not often related to the word composition. Yep. Does, does that make sense? I don't know if that makes, it makes sense in my head. It does. That was passionate and a bit wild, but lovely. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it has to make sense, insightful Kevin. insightful is what it was. Yeah, but it was yeah. almost like, it was like rousing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This is how, it. like, it's so clear in my head, but I don't know is it clear in other people's heads what I'm saying, like, you know. Um, it is. It, yeah, okay. You're very clear. Ron, you can definitely expand on what I just said. I know you can. I could, but it's like, I try and link things back to the basics all the yeah, time. Yeah, see, I'm not good at the basics. So <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's those basics that breed greatness. Like, oh, as you say, That's John, a quote right there. We'll put that is a, a quote. T-shirt, tripod.ie. Um, back, yeah, from the composition, that leads into like the, the finished product and from composition you've little things like using a handheld remote or a wired shutter release and everything up to luminosity masks later on and planning for your scene and knowing using apps like uh, the photographer's ephemeris and stuff like mm. that to plan your shot like that all comes from the basics so mm. that's why i yeah. try link it back that way because when you master the basics they it's like driving a car you don't think about changing gear anymore. It just happens. So then you move on and you master your planning. Mm. And that becomes natural and second nature. Like you shift into third gear. Then mm. you go on and you master like manipulating the the image in Photoshop using luminosity masks and all that. You're up into fourth gear away yeah. in a hack then. And then it just becomes easy. Yeah. Uh, now it's never easy, but it becomes second nature. And you'll find all of the thought press process gone into your composition and all that back in the day when you started out that thought process becomes second nature and that's when your composition gets better because you you go looking for like to break the rule of thirds to use the golden spiral oh, and yes. all things like that and that's when you master them then you move on and you move on and you move on and all of those elements start with the basics so when you mention basics right we're talking exposure focus and kind of the rule of thirds, basic composition, Com basically. Basic composition. Pretty much, yeah. Is, that's what you're talking about when you mentioned basics, yeah. Okay. Well, um, knowing how to turn your camera on. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> knowing the exposure triangle. We have an episode on that. Yeah. Yeah, we do actually. Yeah. So basically, the, tri the basics I would say to learn, rule of thirds, exposure triangle, and histogram. And you're, you're away laughing. in a hack. Yeah. I was you're just about to ask, Grace. honestly be flying. If you wanted to teach someone exposure um, and how to properly expose a scene, would you tell them use the exposure meter on their camera as well as the histogram? Just the histogram. What I what okay. I always teach people on my workshops, um, use the exposure meter, and I teach them how that works. And then we go through. And the very next lesson I do is like your exposure meter is a liar. <laughs> and the example I always use is when it snows. Because cameras see in terms of luminosity, so they see black to white. They don't see like that's really dark, that's really bright. They yeah. always put something as some shade of black or grey or white. So when it snows and you whip your camera out, the camera looks at that and goes, oh my God, this is frightfully overexposed. I must correct for that. And your exposure meter will be balanced in the middle and all of your shadows will be jet black, but the snow will be like kind of slightly underexposed because the camera thinks it's bright but snow is Whoa. meant to be white 
like in snow is yeah. white. So you then need to go into manual mode and adjust to get all the pixels on the histogram that the camera has pushed away from the right hand side. You need to push them right back up to the right hand side because the right hand side of the histogram is white and that's where snow should be. Now you don't want to push it too far because it will be overexposed but you want to get it right up there so there's just a little sliver of a gap between the right hand side and then all your shadows and that will be properly exposed. The exposure meter though would have tried to push all of those white pixels away the other way and by doing that it pushes all the dark pixels off the back end of the histogram and you lose all that information. Wow. So vitally important to trust your histogram more than your exposure meter and always be thinking in terms of luminosity. We actually said it with the rapeseed shot cave that you had. Mm. The camera will see those rapeseed flowers as really, really bright white, but it's a shade of yellow. Like in the camera's eyes, it goes, that's a really bright white. It's a bit of a shade of yellow. This is how I'm going to expose for it. This is gonna, how I'm going to do the white balance. But in reality, like those flowers aren't bright. They're just yellow. And they're like yeah. a, a lighter shade of yellow. To Little us. rats. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. luminosity cameras. terms, the camera goes <laughs> underexposed. Under ah, exposed. quick. Yeah. yeah it's the... frightfully overexposed in that rapeseed. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so yeah, you come to terms of things like that when you learn the basics and yeah, get yeah. the exposure triangle and then understand how that affects your histogram. Sorry for the rant. <laughs> That's okay. Sean, any uh, final tips for composition? I know we'd have them going one at a time, but composition is the most important factor, I think. To Reduce make... distractions. Yes. Take distractions out of the scene. Um, if Perfect. there's a branch in the bottom right hand corner of a lovely image, just step Snap to the it left. Off. Just, oh, no, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. A couple of steps to the left. <laughs> not condoning damaging Mother Nature, but she can yeah. repair herself. So, so yeah. I love clean for I love clean images. Just images that just there's your eye can't be drawn anywhere other than, yeah, the main than where subject. it should be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just keep it pure. Keep it. That pure. comes with experience. That that so, so don't expect to get that overnight. It doesn't yeah. happen. So I mean. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Nice, Shawnee. What camera mode should uh, a beginner, let's say, use? Not even a beginner. What camera mode should someone use? Oh, for landscapes, I just have to say manual mode. Like, I, I mean, yeah, manual mode. Now, mm, when you're shooting waves, um, you can use shutter priority and leave the camera deal with the aperture and the ISO. Uh, generally, it'll go to quite a low enough, or sorry, a wide enough aperture to let in as much light as possible when you're shooting like one thousandth of a second. But 90%, 99% of my shootings is in manual mode where I'm just using my histogram to, or my light meter to uh, balance my exposures, you know. Um, I think when you're shooting in manual mode, get in, actually, you know what, yeah, get into manual mode as quick as possible yeah. because that's the best way you, the, that's the quickest way you're going to learn how exposure works in terms of the ISO shutter and the aperture. Yeah. Can I, can I give... A cheap way to get into manual mode without having to think about it. Yes. To always get the perfect exposure. If you think with landscape photography, you're using a tripod. So when you think about the exposure triangle, when you want to take a photograph, you always make a statement in your head. Uh, whether it's a portrait, a landscape, a race car, a bird flying, you always say to yourself in your head what you want to achieve. So if I'm shooting a model, I think to myself, I'd love a blurry background on that. And I want the model's face nice and sharp. That tells me what my settings are. I want a blurry background. So I want an F2.8 or an mm -hmm. F1.8 or something like that. I want the model's face to be sharp. I'm hand holding the camera. So it has to be over 160 out of a second. The last one then I use to balance the exposure is the ISO. So that's my exposure triangle nailed in. When you think about a landscape photo, you're on a tripod. So your shutter speed is irrelevant. You always say to yourself, I want lots of depth of field and the best picture quality possible. So that's F11, ISO 100. Boom, done. Because F11 yeah. gives you good depth of field. ISO 100 is the best ISO you can possibly get. The last one to balance the exposure is your shutter speed. And sure, mm -hmm. that's inconsequential because you're on a tripod. So that's, there you go. Change your shutter speed until your exposure meter is in the middle. And bang, you're in manual mode. That, is, that, that. is actually perfect. You know that because mm -hmm. you're right. If you, like, instead of thinking, you know, oh, 
what should I speed doing? He's like, just what do I want from my photo? Like mm. what you know what I mean? What like mm. what do I want to achieve here? And you just bend and work it to that way. That's brilliant, yeah. Ronan. It's kind of like nailing down what I can and can't change or what needs to be available, what doesn't need to be available. So like if you want to shoot a scene that's all in focus and with a good depth of field, it has to be like F11 or something yep. narrower than that. Do you know what I mean? If I want to keep the image noise free, it has to be ISO 100. So now you've basically locked in two out of the three of the exposure triangle and the only thing that's left that can alter the exposure is your shutter speed. Really, really good Class. analogy there. Yeah, Ronan. One good tip. caveat with that though, oh. that that would be a tip for beginners because as you move along, like Sean says, shooting the waves, if you want to freeze the action, then you're actually picking your shutter speed. Or if you're in yeah. the woods and it's really windy and there's trees bouncing around and you want them tack sharp, you'd want a faster shutter speed as well. So do, don't just skip over and get stuck in the loop of shooting like that. Use that as the premise to figure out because by doing that, you'll get a mad variation in shutter speeds all the time, depending on the light. So have a look mm. at those images as you do and learn from it and see then going forward. Do you know what? I shot a lake there and the shutter speed came up as five seconds and all the ripples were taken out of it versus the shutter speed came up at one fifth of a second and all the ripples were still in the lake. So pay attention to what the actual settings are doing, what each, each individual setting does to the photograph. And then again, that shifts you up a gear. The next time you'll be able to balance your exposure by doing the mats of it with stops and all that mm. and choosing your actual settings to get the look you want. Yeah. Yeah. Basics, Correct. isn't it? It's depending on what you want really out of the scene. You know? Correct. Um, and you learn that as you go on, like depending on what you want, there will be a certain set of settings for that. Like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a minefield. It's a minefield. It is. It's, there's so much to it. Like, it's mm. a bloody mess. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. It is insane. Like how how much like you you need to know, how much you can you can learn. Should I say? It's Is insane it? when you see when people see landscape images. And they don't realize it's like the foundations of a house. The most important work is unseen. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, lads, this episode is quotable yeah. bangers. Like, it's just man. <laughs> Holy mother just on, God! Just on a wavelength here. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just an absolute wavelength. This is gorgeous, uh, Ronan. What accessories yes. could one use for what? For landscape photography. I'm glad you uh, cleared that up for me. Thank you, Kev, because I could have said anything there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the one I said earlier that is dead handy you picked them up on Amazon for little to nothing um, a wired shutter release to accompany your camera and also attached to that I would say take your camera strap off your camera or get a detachable camera strap that like you can whip it off because a big thing in landscape photography is camera shake because yes. especially if you use the recipe we said there and you're getting shutter speeds under 160th of a second all the time. So like 130th of a second, 150th of a second, one second, two seconds. The longer your shutter speed, the more time there is for the environment, like the wind. Um, if you bump off your tripod, something to shake the camera and it'll affect the sharpness of your image. If you're using a wired shutter remote, it means you don't have to press the shutter on your camera. You can press it down by the side. Like if I, for the people on video, press the microphone now, like I'm pressing the camera shutter button, you can see how much it moves. It's the same on the camera. When you press the button on the camera, even though it's on a tripod, the camera is going to go doop and you're going to yeah. get camera shake in your image, especially at higher um, shutter speeds. The, it's the same with the detachable strap. When you have like the strap on your camera and it's a bit breezy or a bit windy and that's just flopping off your tripod, when you start off your exposure, that's going to shake the camera around. So there's two gadgets, a detachable strap and a, a wired shutter release to plug into your camera and they'll reduce the amount of shake and give you a sharper image. And you'd be amazed how much sharper they get your images. Yeah. That's the first thing you taught me, I think, Ronan. Is it? Do you yeah. have you a notebook or something and you just remember these things? No, it's just I remember important and cute things. And that was, what, yeah. You that is cute. Like, yeah, that's take, cute. take the strap off the camera immediately. Hmm. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Hopefully yeah. I wasn't that aggressive. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> do it. Do it right now. <laughs> you're lovely. Um, but yeah, like that's, you know, that it, it is a great tip. And it's once again, if you're a beginner, like you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that even some people who are a bit further along, probably yeah. would, you know, might not know, oh, why am I getting this little bit of, you know, why isn't it as sharp as it should be? Why, you know, why is this happening? Something silly and like, you know, that may seem as irrelevant as having a camera strap on there and it's catching the wind or whatever, you know, it's mad. 100%. You'd be amazed, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, Any uh, essential tips, Shawnee? Or uh, I was gonna say, I was going to say an L bracket. Um, L bracket. So if people out there listen don't know what an L bracket is, Sean, what, what's, a, what's an L bracket? It means more like Kevin it, doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I do. I, I do know what it is. I'm just so I love it. shooting. I love shooting vertically. Um, I love shooting vertically uh, for landscapes. So like an L bracket can enable you to shoot um, vertical images. Now, a lot of tripods and the ball heads, they flip down so you can so you can flip your camera basically and shoot vertically. But you actually end up losing an awful lot of height. Whereas with the L bracket, you can keep your camera at the proper height, but still have it shot vertically. So the L bracket, it's, it's in the shape of an L. Oh. There we go. And um, it's the the actual upright part of the L, which generally runs vertically along either the left or the right hand side of the camera. That's Arca Swiss compatible, so that can slide into the ball head and um, enable you to shoot vertically. So yeah, ball, uh, L brackets are, are quite handy. Now I didn't get one for a while, are they essential? I'd say pick one up. You can pick one up on Amazon for fifteen euros. Do you know what I mean? And they'll do the job fine. So yeah, I would I would say an L bracket is essential. Yeah, definitely. Very nice. Very nice. Do you know where they're really essential? That I struggled with. I was doing a shot up in Clock Lee when I first got neutral density filters, and I was doing a three minute exposure. And do you ever notice that every tripod ever, when you want to turn your camera to portrait it goes down to the left and the camera clips onto it yeah if you clip your camera onto that long enough and you haven't tightened your tripod plate the camera is actually working on the tread of the tripod plate and it ends up just spinning off and then rolling down the hill and clockly oh uh, that sounds very specific <laughs> <laughs> but it actually it'll actually untread itself exactly what you're talking really about. yeah where if, yeah. if you have an l bracket your your tripod's upright and you don't have that worry That's yeah so my, my camera and brand new filters and everything went a good 15 all- foot roll down the hill like <laughs> wow. i hope it was a soft day was it it was it was a grand soft day good it, yeah you're dead right it's almost like your the weight turns the tread that of the plate mm-hmm. like that's screwed into it. yeah jeez yeah definitely get an L bracket folks and then do it, it goes kaboom and then it's Jesus. gone Jesus um, do we have any essential editing techniques oh Did here we go this one to this Shawnee one, boy I think yeah this oh, one has to go. go to Sean doesn't here it here we like, go baby strap ourselves and I do um, my one first actually I was just going to really say quick. You go for it, Ron, because there's a few be that you well. there's, there's, <laughs> a few that, there's a few that you taught me Ron and that to this day are like amazing, gorgeous, underutilized by by people. And go ahead. Okay, well, the one that I'm going to say that's really quick and simple, and again, basics to stick to my theme. It, especially, it's relevant to me at the moment because I'm only getting back into landscape photography. The best thing you can do when editing a landscape photograph is get up and walk away from it. Take a coffee smoke whatever you're into whatever your poison is and come back to it like 10 or 15 minutes later and it's like looking at a brand new image like Mm. then make more changes to it get up walk away from it because i'm really lazy when i process my landscapes and often it takes me two minutes i do it up throw it on instagram and the next day i text the two of and say god i hate that photo (laughs) (laughs) i haven't made the other day as well i saw something fudge i can't believe that like yeah so if you get up and walk away from it come back with fresh eyes look at something green as well like the background on this video and then you'll be laughing and green will relax your eyes by the way so really yeah if you look at green grass or green trees or anything it relaxes the eye so yeah that's my my tip Never that, but green. Yep. Wow. Look at all the green. Uh, Shawnee. Come here, I'll give a small tip. I gave it on the, the Lightroom tips again. 
But uh, it's just, it's it's one that Ronan taught me and it is the, it's a straight horizon for landscape photographers. It's, it's key. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's nothing worse. And I, I say this because I, I, I did this before Ronan told me. There is nothing worse when you see a photograph that's, it's a beautiful photo, but it's just a bit, you know, yeah. just a little bit not right. And yeah. um, 100%. Yeah, I think the, it's it's essential. So like you can use the tool in Lightroom where you drag the, uh, the spirit level and just make sure it's straight. Because honestly, like it's such, you, you, and you'll notice it yourself, uh, folks, when, when you do it, like you, you'll see it and go, ah, like it's like magic yeah. when it happens. You know, when, when it gets dead straight, it's like, oh, okay, that's it. Like that's, that's it. You know what I mean? Um, that's all. That's a, a little tip Ronan gave me about four or five years ago. And uh, I use it all the time. I love it. Brilliant. Um, love you, Ronan. You can a, really. That thing to say there, Kevin. That I, <laughs> I gave you a little tip a few years ago. Is that what you said? <laughs> and that you loved it. Sorry, Sean. Continue. Sean can't oh. continue after that. That's the first time I made a dirty joke. I know. Podcast. Welcome. We, Finally, <laughs> fifty-four I, episodes later. Like, how do I continue on from that? Like, you know, um, well, I've got a big tip to give you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. And now it's going to go. Welcome to the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> Please give us your big tip, Shani. Oh, no matter. Um, I've got a few. I've got a few of them, actually. A few? What kind of mutant are you? Oh, okay. So right. there's Hang a couple, on. right? Breathe, a, focus. Okay, yeah, I, I'm completely, Go. completely at one at the moment. I was talking so, to myself. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's one that I really wrote and put that tape away. <laughs> Put those seven inches away. Oh so Ooh, you said you show me it. eight. I'm joking. Sorry. Go. Are we, are we ready? Who knows? <laughs> so graduated filter top and bottom. Yes. Is a great way to frame a landscape image, particularly one where your subject is in the middle of the shot. So graduated filter top and bottom. I use it on every single one of my landscape images I'd say more or less um, another editing tip okay and I see this happening so much stop trying to introduce colours during the wrong time of the day what I mean by that is warming up an image to make it look like a sunset that's been shot at 2 o'clock in the day like when the sun is at 12 o'clock in the sky do you know what I mean you introduce ugly yellow haze into the clouds so to sum up this tip nail your white balance basically do you know what I mean I would rather see a clear crisp white balanced image that's been shot in midday harsh sun than something that's tried been tried to make look like a sunset and that applies to magenta as well people adding way too much magenta to an image to a sunset shot where the sun is still two hours from setting. It introduces awful colours in the foreground, in the in the sky. It just does not look natural. And trust me, I've done it myself. I've done it myself. I'll never forget, I was in Brisbane seven years ago, seven or eight years ago in Australia, and I took a photograph in Brisbane of the city skyline at 11 o'clock in the morning, and the sun was really high up the sky, and I poured the magenta into it. I thought it looked unbelievable. <laughs> I thought it looked unbelievably <laughs> Literally, it looked <laughs> unbelievable. And good God, it was horrendous. Can you dig so, that photo out, John? I'll try would, and find it. I would it. love I, to see that. Do you know what? I will. I'll try. It's definitely somewhere. I'll try and find it. Yeah. It's probably way down my Flickr account. But start, so, yeah, so nail your white balance. Do you know what I mean? Don't, especially with the with the warm white balance, you can see it in the clouds. It's just like dirty yellow haze. It just does not look nice. Do you know what I mean? It does not look nice. Another tip I'd have is try and get into selective edits as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's good. And for for the listeners who don't know what selective edits versus global edits, so when you're in Lightroom, we'll say, and you're in your basic panel, and you 
um, increased exposure. That's a global edit because it's affecting the entire image. Whereas a selective edit is your radial filter, your grad filter, your brush tool, where you're editing selective parts of the image. And when you nail selective edits, you begin to understand how to manipulate light within the actual shot itself. And by doing that, you create a tonal contrast because you could brighten light in one area and darken light in another. And that, in, in effect, is also creating a more immersive image because, you know, you're, you, you, let's say you could make your foreground brighter and the middle ground darker and the mountain, the light hitting the mountain, brighter again. Are so we just talking about your shot that you just showed us before the podcast started? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was yeah, fair. Much, that's yeah. actually very apt. I had a different yeah. shot in my head, but that's kind of yeah, that's kind of apt yeah. actually. Um, I was that's not the one I had in my head, but when you do selective edits, like you just begin to develop a more appreciation for 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 light, especially in landscape photos. So versus global edits, that like with global global edits are fine, but they're affecting parts of the image that you might not want affected. So. Selective edits can be the tools I mentioned in Lightroom. If you're familiar with Photoshop, masking is a great way to do selective editing. Applying an adjustment and then masking out the areas you don't want that adjustment affecting is an incredibly powerful tool. And someone asked it. You're an incredibly Paul, powerful tool. Thank you. Was it Paul, um, what's Paul's second name? He asked a question on the Tripod page today. Paul Eskin, uh, oh, not Eskin. Uh, anyway, Paul, 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 you know who you are, listening. he asked a question about the best, most powerful techniques in Photoshop that we learned. And, and a oh, load yes. of people mentioned masking in Photoshop. And that just goes to show how powerful it is as a selective editing tool. And like Mark McGuire mentioned mask, I mentioned masking and luminosity masks. So definitely selective edits is something that you should not shy away from at the very start. And just play around with it. Practice like, do you know what I mean? Just, just practice. If you want raw files, text us. Can I have one of your raw files, Sean? I would love to edit one of your raw files. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Yeah. Can I no also worries. post that as my own and say I went to, like Dolan or Connemara? Yeah, you do what you actually can. I wouldn't even be mad at this. You can. <laughs> you're, you're like a little puppy, like so. Yeah, I wouldn't even be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, right um, lads. That actually, Sean, that that kind of leads well into the last question that I spent hours compiling for this beautiful interview that I've had with these two fantastic landscape photographers. Uh, and once again, it's going to go to both of you and the host of the monopod, Mr. Kevin Hennessy. Um, what is your top tip for beginners? And we'll go to you first, Ronan, Harding Downs of Ronan HD Photography on all social media sites. Except for Twitter, where I'm Ronan HD, because somebody else had my name, but... I'm, 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 I'm Kevin H photos or something on Twitter as well. Maybe weird. the name was too long on Twitter, was it? Yes. So yeah, my top tip for beginners is get your Twitter handle first and then work the rest of them around that now. Um, <laughs> top tip for I wasn't beginners. wasn't expecting that. That I hear that That's, every day whenever the, I open my mouth. No, what? That was good. That, that, um, that tickled me in, in <laughs> nice places. Top tip for beginners is get out and make mistakes and just go for it don't think i'm not going to shoot that because it might not work the light's not right or this or that or like that's not a postcard shot if you're walking along and you see something that interests you photograph it bring the photo home bring it into lightroom play with it practice blending practice masking practice selective edits there is no rule out there that says you have to post it online and there's no rule that says people have to come and criticize your work just shoot if you enjoy shooting if something catches your eye shoot practice 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 do it as often as you can and you're away in a hack yes i cannot top that I was just going to, uh, there's no, yeah. no, yeah, that's like. That's exactly that, what I was going to say. I was same just going to say, just, that's just it. get out and shoot. Don't, don't worry about the, the technicalities. Just, just have just fun. Honestly, just, just I do am it. a tripod. You are a tripod. The round and Harding no, Downs. No, 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 no. You did. Don't make it dirty. No, you no. did. Like the that shocking behavior. I don't know what's come over you today. That's not what I meant. I meant, um, that's not. But yeah, honestly, listeners, just like grab your camera, <laughs> no matter what time of day it is, and just go and explore somewhere. Even if you're going into town for a 
dentist appointment, bring your camera, whatever. Just have it on you at all times in case you meet Ryan Gosling on the road. <laughs> can I can I show you something real quick? And this will be perfect oh. for the video of the listeners. But I, I posted <laughs> on the, the Tripod story. Um, but like this isn't the image. I couldn't find the one example, but this is basically the same thing. This was shot in the middle of the day. Yes. Long exposure. Oh, wait till you see this. That's, oh, wow. Uh, here we go. Share. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> That's natural, no? The burn of sunset. It's the burn of sunset as well. Like. <laughs> Look at the sky replacement. <laughs> For some reason, we've had a lot of phallic references in this podcast, <laughs> such as calling me a tripod and the small tip and the big tip. And then somehow, Sean pulls out this image. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll is, say no more this has it's, been fantastic <laughs> you'd swear this was planned um, but lads look at the colour look at the colours look at the big dirty dust ball here but look at the colours in that wow I mean wow. look at the was, coma and all oh, yeah. there's no this like just, the contrast where the light should be falling <laughs> on the background look at that that rock formation in the back left. it just doesn't make sense <laughs> it's as bright as the highlights of this <laughs> <laughs> there's no purple light on the foreground at all and the sky oh. is a luminous purple oh, I love those like, purple I do love those purple sunsets though like those glaring purple sunsets oh my god wait here's another one this is in Sydney that's not too bad that's, that actually looks natural yeah, there's another one here oh here we go <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> there's Magento Overload this was shot in the middle of the day <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, what did you god. Sydney Harbour at sunset as well look at the caption yeah look at um, this look the worst thing is 11 people actually decided to favour it but it was probably yeah, me look. on all 11 accounts I have so <laughs> <laughs> that's so hilarious what? there's hope for everyone when you after you've seen that I am look never this. looking at my flicker ever there you go uh, we, we should do it we should all post somewhere. yeah yes yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at our flickers. Flicker yeah, photos. true. Uh, that was lads, a lovely episode. Thank you so much for coming on to the Kevin Hennessy Monopod. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to have two of the bright, the, the bravest. That's a new one. Two of the brightest and most talented landscape photographers that I happen to have on my screen at this moment in time. Wow. Um, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And listeners, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. Until then, I've been Kevin Hennessy. The lads have been the lads. And we will see you next Tuesday. Did it. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk photography. And there you have it, folks. Another episode of The Tripod. If you did enjoy the podcast, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. And you can always subscribe to the podcast. And if you want to listen to more episodes, head over to www.tripod.ie where you can find us on our socials, which include Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Okay, Ron, that's enough. Can, yeah, that's, on Snapchat that's and enough TikTok. And, okay, thanks. <laughs>